my name is Jesse Baker. I'm the owner and operator of Arcade Legacy at the mostly abandoned Cincinnati Mall in Forest Park, Ohio. There's nothing more exciting than out playing your opponent just because you knew what they were going to do ahead of time. Squall throws out a lot of smart stuff at a good time. Oh! Wow! Try to punish the roll. It's every gamer's heaven. Like, just if you like video games, you want to come here. Believe in the sort of power and dragon sound. Oh, yeah! Nicely done. Take it down. Um, Arcade Legacy is an, an all you can play game room. You pay one price to get in, and then you can play on everything. Even though when these games were made, you know, you could play, a lot of people played them alone at their house, it's always more fun to play games with other people. Well, for one, if you look around, there's games on free play everywhere. You get in for five bucks. They have just about anything you could want video game related if you're trying to purchase something. There's pinball machines, and I'm a huge sucker for pinball. And even more importantly, fight nights every Thursday for quality competition in just about every fighting game you could possibly think of. I mean, I love this place. Being able to play arcade games when I want. They've got a store up front where you can buy some of the games that you may see on the show or may know otherwise. Not only that, there's tons and tons of arcade games, and it's only $5 for like a limited play. So it's such a good deal. Especially when you're playing here, you can meet a lot of new people who grew up playing the same games you played and you can instantly have a conversation and talk about really detailed things and you know what the other guy's talking about and it's just a really good time. Uh, I love coming to Arcade Legacy for the rhythm games. Um, they have DDR, Guitar Freaks, Pop-In and a lot of other Bimani series games. And you can get all around, play all the games, be competitive or play cooperatively. So it's just a lot more fun when you're with other people. And I haven't seen any other place that has as many people coming to do it as Arcade Legacy. Well, Arcade Legacy started a little over five years ago as Arcade Legends. In about, it would have been 2010 or 2011 uh, was the first time I actually came down here. And they weren't located in the mall like they are now. I've been coming here since about 2011. That's when they were the old, old location. And just followed the arcade since then. Started that with my my best friend since sixth grade, and um, after about a year, we didn't do so well. It was, it was okay. We weren't really making any money, and uh, he didn't he didn't want to be in the business anymore. I'm a Thursday regular. I have uh, came around to the arcade since the very, very, very beginning. Like when he had a little arcade in a little small little corner store, and still here now. I decided to keep it going and. Uh, then we, we've moved around a couple times. We started in Fairfield, and now we're here at, in Forest Park at the mall, and it's just been growing over the last five years. Wednesday, we have Beat It or Die Trying, which is a series where we're trying to complete every NES game from A to Z. been working on that for over two years now. It's pretty fun. We stream it live online so that anyone can watch and then we archive it on YouTube. Tonight is going to be a particularly frustrating episode as we are taking on some of the hardest games on the NES back to back. There's about 720 of these games are so made and we want to play every single one of them. Now the secret to playing this game is to stay calm. Yeah that's going to last 10 seconds. Well, it's not just about playing the game, it's kind of, you know, the story behind how we got to, you know, playing Nintendo and kind of our evolution of, you know, playing the games as we grew up. It's, you're, you're either playing, you're casting, or you're watching. So, either way, you're part of the experience, no matter what. This is a, there's a great atmosphere. You get to meet a lot of people up here that you normally wouldn't meet. Um, the old aspect of arcades is a lot more fun than sitting at home eating potato chips by yourself. This is actually, uh... You got this, Tyler. This boss fight here is actually a lot harder than anything, the last boss, the first form of the last boss. There we go. Finally. 
You're the man, Tyler. Well, it's, it's fun because there's a sense of camaraderie because we all grew up kind of playing these games. So it's kind of something that we all had in common. It all kind of brought us together and we all kind of you know, just bounce off each other really well. I mean, sometimes I'll watch the stream on Twitch instead of coming in, but it's a lot more fun being around the friends that I've gathered over the last two years and getting to watch the stream live and getting to participate every now and again. <laughs> yeah, that was, there's nothing I can do about that except die. They're a lot more challenging than games nowadays. and I, I just like, when I beat something, I have the accomplishment of beating something that was harder than a simple game now. Oh, he gave you the Joker! He gave you the Joker! Shoot! I usually play bad games, Deadly Towers, Hide Lied, um, games that you won't really think are beatable. And I think it's some of the really terrible games that bring out the best in us that make it even more fun, is play the stuff that sucks, you know, and, and, and get mad. Just enjoy the reaction. Uh, because I think that brings out some of the, the best highlights of the show. Well, fi a fighting game crowd is, they come to play fighting games. They don't, you know, they don't come to, to play arcades very much. There's a few games they'll play because they're also competitive, like Blitz and NBA Jam. They, they play, they, they come because they're competitive people. And then the, the people that come Wednesday for Beat I Trying just, classic video game lovers so they love to play the old, old arcade games and they are they f like they feel compelled to to conquer these games and i am one of those people and then thursday night's fight night it's uh basically every, most of the popular fighting games right now Smash Brothers is huge. Here at Arcade Legacy, we started uh, started Smash back up maybe about a year, year and a half ago. We've been doing it every week since. Uh, it's been really, really great. It's a really awesome venue for it. Street Fighter, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, Tekken. Well, like the Street Fighter, Street Fighter Marvel community a little bit is kind of the same. I'd say 50 to 70 people come out every Thursday to play all these fighting games in person, which is awesome. I won't, I won't say Street Fighter, but it's more, I guess, the whole like mainstream, the more mainstream fighting game sense. Whereas Smash is a different one. You know, they have their own set community over on this side. First of all, this is a great place for Smash in general, just because it's like one of the only places in Cincinnati where a bunch of people who play the same game can meet up and, you know, get to know each other, hang out. But now since Evo and everything is picking up Smash, so like the communities are kind of like, melding together now, you know, to like make just one whole community. Those are the two main weekly events and then the weekends we do tournaments. Oh wow. It looks like it should clean out the second game. This, in particular, is one of the largest events that Southwest Ohio has ever seen. So I, I had no choice, I had to come. The community is like new players every week. We're getting a bunch of new, new faces and stuff, so it's, it's growing steadily. They're all super welcoming. Even, even though there's rivalries between the games, no one ever calls bull on anyone else's games or makes fun of them or anything. Oh, and that should be the set. Son-in-law advances. The community like makes a big difference because everyone's really friendly, like willing to help each other, very talkative. It's just a good way to get better at like a certain game. My number one reason is that I love the Cincinnati community. Everyone's like a tight-knit family and everyone's really cool. Everyone here is great. Uh, the events are usually well run, run on time. We have a stream set up for whoever has an event running that day. And I mean, honestly, this is, this is just a great place to play. This, it's why I come back every week. The people that play online a lot don't really come here. 
every once in a while someone will ask if they can play online and we don't usually offer it because what's the point of coming to an arcade to play online? People are very friendly, very sensitive to others feelings, very sensitive to their environment by comparison to online gaming where everything is anonymous. The vast majority of the time your online communities tend to be really, really toxic and uh, you don't get to meet people face to face and the anonymity just allows people to do and say horrible things. Um, they're way different. Oh boy. <laughs> it kind of depends on uh, the community. Since the online community, they're not sitting next to you, they're not like, they just don't seem like real people. When you get online, you're playing someone, it could just be anyone behind a computer and it doesn't matter. They, they lack a lot of the social element that really keeps me going, you know. If you've ever played a MOBA based game, you'll know how great that community is. I don't know if anyone's played a MOBA game before, but whoever has knows just how toxic those communities can be. Mid or feed is a normal, is a very common phrase. This basically means that I'm a douchebag and uh, I'm gonna ruin this game for you. Online community is a lot more hateful than like a local community is. Because I've noticed that like when people are online playing, they like do what they want because they're safety behind a computer. They're like, they like might talk a lot of trash more so than in person. And there's nothing like that in Smash Bros. You have some people that get a little bit salty, but everyone's friendly, everyone's just, you have, you're, you're friendly, you're a friendly community instead of a antagonist community, I guess. Well, I think it goes without saying that people in person have a tendency to be more polite, um, have a tendency to be nicer. Uh, that goes without saying, and that's definitely been true in my experience in the Smash community. The mall actually is, it's gone like up and down over the years, it's been sold many times, and it's probably going to be sold again here pretty soon. So there's, there's always the potential for someone to come in and buy it that wants to do something with it and, and turn it around. Uh, we're definitely not holding this mall together. We have a, a very small footprint in this mall. They would be fine without us, but I'm sure they don't want us to go. Um, and we don't want to go either. We're not planning on leaving it. But I, the mall is definitely not closing. So that's, that's not something anyone would have to worry about. I would definitely say, if you have the passion, if you like to play games, just come and play, meet people. A lot of the community is very, very nice. They'll talk to you. If you like a game or you like a character, you know, and you're not really that good at them or you want to learn stuff, they'll always, they'll always help you out. Just ask and just come play. That's it. That's simple as that. I would say come on down. I mean, we're always looking for new players. We are, you know, we they welcome me with open arms. I'll welcome anybody else. I'm, I'm actually surprised all the time that it's still, people still come and the attendance continues to go up slightly. It's it's hit a, a, a kind of a level plane the last couple of years, but it's a, it's a really solid, you know, amount of people that come in here and you know, I'm always shocked and I feel grateful for it. Just go, hang out. Most likely you'll make a friend in about five minutes. I did. So, <laughs> and I've been coming here ever since. I'm not very simple. I'm not a very simple person. I've had some trouble, but everyone is, is like understanding under, and understand any kind of social quirks you have. And it's just, you grow in people and then eventually you open up. Like I've opened up a lot more than I thought I ever would. And you know, you meet new friends, you just have a lot of fun. When I came up here, I met Jesse and a bunch of other people who had similar interests as me in terms of not just games, but music and uh, you know, movie taste and stuff. And then we all just became this giant melting pot of, uh, just, it's, like, it's like a camaraderie up here where everyone like, has something else to bring to the table, which is kind of nice. We're going to be opening a arcade bar in Northside, which is uh, it's about 20 minutes from here. And uh, that's going to be open in a couple months, hopefully in April. That's our goal. We're, we're just now getting in there, but it'll be, uh, an adult version of this location. I, I came, I didn't know anybody. I was like a little intimidating, trying to make friends, um, but everyone was very welcoming, and you know, you make friends pretty quickly here. Um, and it's great, because it's all different age groups. People are all over the board, come from all walks of life, so you actually get a lot of exposure to other communities as well. I mean, we, we just had Troy and Zach come the first time a couple weeks ago, and uh, they fit in great, we love it. So we welcome all new players. And everyone's just like really engaging. Even if you're like a new player, everyone's more than willing to help you out. And even afterwards, like we go out to dinner. So it's just kind of nice because it like continues on, like even after the tournament. And it's a good way to like just make friends too. Usually when you tell somebody that they can play video games all day, arcade games, console games, all that for 10 bucks, that's that sells itself. You don't have to you don't have to talk too many people into 
into doing it. The people that come here already know what they want usually. They want to play video games. So it's a pretty easy sell. <laughs>